Now we're moving on to the next presentation to be made by Natalia Vorobiova. Because in English, I don't, it's Natalia Gennadievna. I don't have the middle name in the English version. So Natalia Vorobiova is the head of department of the Finko company. She will tell us about the use of unmanned aerial systems. Hello, dear colleagues. I come from the group of companies of unmanned uh, aerial systems, a joint stock company of Finko, located in Izhevsk, and it is a leading manufacturer and user of unmanned aerial systems uh, known under the brand Supercam. The UAV Supercam has high tactical and accuracy specs. Also, the time of flight up to four and a half hours and uh, capability to work in different temperatures and uh, deployment of the complex takes just 15 minutes and one can work or do the flight in un unmanned mode. The unmanned aerial system is used in different areas of economy and performs a broad range of tasks, which include disaster monitoring and aerial monitoring over animals and all sorts of other monitoring related to environment and control of the existing or ongoing changes. The aerial photography in different spectral ranges allows us to analyze not only the visual changes, but also we can view and detect those cha changes which are unseen by a human eye. We use an UAV also for applied tasks of land survey and cartography. For that, we use land-based and onboard geodesic receivers. Our company is trying not only to is build a multifunctional unmanned aerial unit, but also develop a reliable, robust technology to get uh, reliable data. And uh, in that case, in this case, I always make an example. Whenever you visit a tailor by ordering a dress, you are not really interested what kind of sewing machine will be used by that tailor. What you're concerned about is that this dress were good, would be fit your figure and done as soon as possible. But if you, when you buy a sewing machine, then of course you're interested in that that sewing machine is of high quality and you're interested in the technology which is used to uh, sew a dress. So what we do here, we make dresses and also sell the sewing machines. That's why we are always concerned about the quality of our end product, and that's why we're always happy when we can test run our technology jointly with our end users of our software. Now I'm going to show you two projects which were done jointly with the end user. So, th th so these are projects from different areas. The first area was acquisition of accurate and reliable data to build maps for the area. The co-executing agency was topographic uh, surveying company who had to build topographic plans of 1 to 500, 1 to 5,000 in the area of oil uh, exploration using UAV images. Also, they were studying the use of this UAV imagery. They assessed the acquired data and then would select the software most fi fit to process this data. The project started initially in 2014, and the main task for us was to have an aerial photography 
to get topographic map at the scale of one to five thousand with uh, uh, two meter relief tiers. They initially did a photographing for seven square kilometers. They had and they used four different s softwares for that: Photomod, Pix4D, Last Master, and Archive Photoscan. All softwares based on the ground control points, they acquired the one to two thousand scale accuracy with two meter relief cross cutting. And uh, at the same time, the core executing agency did an instrumental uh, surveying imagery, land based image acquisition, and they have acquired 50 contour GCPs with which they control the quality of the model. The accuracy on the GCPs again demonstrated that this data are in line with one to two thousand scale requirement with a two meter cross section of the relief. The GCPs on the author photos again throughout the whole field were fully compliant with the scale of one to two thousand. Now you can see the overlap of horizontals. The horizontal acquired in automatic mode photo in photogrammetric way based on the digital elevation model in different softwares and uh, also the horizontal with horizontals which were acquired from the land based instrumental surveying. Y as you can see different softwares had different results but still everything was within the confidence corridor of the scale that we wanted to build. Also the land-based objects were overlapped, overlaid over orthophotos. Again, accuracy was in line with the accuracy of our expected scale. And as you can see, our orthophotos have identified the gaps of some of the in some of the objects and the uh, gaps in the turn points as well. Based on the work done next year in 2015, we did a man, real industrial project with the same company and uh, we did an industrial photography of two oil extraction sites for to build maps of one to five thousand for which the system was initially developed and under that industrial project again a joint decision was made to test run the data of acquired by UAVs in order to build a scale one to five hundred with uh, half a meter cross sections. We did the land acquisition. Also, we have uh, marked the GCPs on ground, and in this case, we did two types of model building. First option was rectification only based on the centers of projection without the use of land-based GCPs, and some GCPs were also acquired for rectification. Uh, as you can see, the results on the GCPs was the same. Based on these data, we built orthophotos and digital elevation model. And uh, in uh, stereoscopic mode, this relief was rectified in interactive mode using the operators, of course. And in the same way, we acquired all the contours for topographic map 1 to 500. The result was simply amazing. Nobody expected it. Now you can see the overlaying of objects that were acquired using the instrumental land-based surveying and uh, which were also acquired in stereoscopic mode using photomod software. The results are self-evident. You can see them. Everything is simply ideal. And again, we saw some of the gaps. And the comparison of horizontals of land-based and stereoscopic photogrammetric imagery uh, moved our 
favor toward the photogrammetric imagery. If we look at the number of points in the dense cloud, of course, it's higher than the number of points acquired in the field. Of course, you cannot take all the microphones forms, and uh, there is a possibility to skip over something. So you can see gaps here over pits and other things. You can see it on the elevation model as, as well, and in the 3D model and the digital matrix as well. The relief and the level ground were different by no more than 15 centimeters. Based on this project, we have come up with a conclusion that this UAV images can be practically applied and their use is possible for to, to build maps and in some cases it would be wiser to use UAVs for that. Of course, we need to use good software to process or have a value chain which would guarantee good results. Next thing, my favorite field actually, acquisition of accurate and reliable data for archaeological projects. We have been working on this project since 2014 again, and uh, a lot of organizations are involved in this project who are different, like historian organizations, linguistic organizations, geophysicists, That is why something is wrong with my mic, I think. Well, I can hear you. The expert co-executors uh, executors of this project for UAVs was the center <laughs> to protect and use the heritage sites. This is an old Russian society to protect cultural and heritage sites and the uh, Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The end goal of this was the uh, use of un-disturbing uh, methods and uh, non-destruction methods and the use of UAVs for landscape detection and uh, for the uh, state protection status. But in 2015, I told you already that we did the aerial photography for the first time of the area and uh, thermal uh, image acquisition also, where we found six main complexes. The data we had to, to come up with uh, Uh, 500, uh, 1 to 500 uh, scale so that uh, my biologists could do their micro detection. They also came up with uh, uh, GCPs which in ensured the required accuracy. And we built a north of photo plan, 3D model, a relief represented uh, by an outline. The analysis and uh, synthesis of uh, UAV data was done uh, based on a test area, 12 to 14th century monument, upon which all geophysical properties have been taken. The data comparison uh, provided a high level of data matching. So now uh, we can see dark areas showing on a thermal remote sensing images contain a human activity layer. White areas 
represent uh, clay areas. So these are settlement areas which used to be composed of a chain of fortifications or other moats and ditches. So now we can see two white lines. These are the walls and the black ones are ditches where sewage came. So the yellow color shows cultural activities of people and the blue ones are those that are less affected by uh, people, that is the clay area. In terms of landscape recognition, uh, we can see some artifacts of the old s fort walls and it is readable and recognizable on ortho photo and the relief confirms those. During the investigations, the archaeologist, as you can see, have found some artifacts too. This is a burial area. So they uh, did a dig there. It's hard to put a size to the uh, scale of this grave. And this is how the orthophoto shows them, unraveling a larger picture. Archaeologists were happy because they could quickly um, assess uh, the scale of damage, the scale of disaster done to this monument. Last year the project wasn't over. It's a uh, work in progress and uh, this year uh, as part of a different project there is a number the total area has doubled next to thermal uh, vision and aerial photography. A multispectral imaging was carried out for further analysis of geophysical properties. Some uh, three weeks ago, I have received a slide from a doctor of history, Professor Jurbin, confirming that based on a phyto indication, we can determine cultural layers, strong cultural layers underground. So you don't have to unearth, you don't have to dig to understand where we have cultural uh, legacy, cultural layer, all the areas where it's been destroyed, so no need to dig there. So the conclusion is data from UAV has practical relevance for archaeological efforts and they're simply a must. Archaeologists should use them by all means whenever they have a chance. As a conclusion and as a final note, I would like to say that we are a distributor of uh, Rakus software photo mod and we are also a partner to Rakus. I think or I would like my presentation to attract your attention so that the users of Photomod and the users of our uh, UAVs, the number of views will increase, which means having more friends. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia Gennadievna, for your very good presentations. Are there any questions? Just a moment, just a moment. Uh, the, she needs a head, head ears. Uh, go ahead. Ваших таблицах точностных вы использовали среднюю ошибку. 
Неужели вы реально рассчитываете среднюю ошибку или среднюю квадратическую, которая будет более... Да, таблицу покажите. Вы используете среднюю ошибку. Какую кон... Понимаете, о чем я? В какой именно таблице? The very first table. Любую таблицу, люб... во всех таблицах. Неважно в как. Средняя погрешность, средняя ошибка. Средняя или среднеквадратическая? Но это статистически неверно. Это должна быть средняя СКО. СКО или просто средняя? Ну, не слушай перевод. It's an average on absolute heights. Я думаю, это неправильное измерение. Нельзя так мерить. Мы используем СКО. Среднеквадратическое. И сразу же другие значения появятся. Ведь русские в математике любым фору дадут. Oh, you see, uh, we work using internal regulations, internal photogrammetric where black and white, it states that we should use average error. So we are following the regulation. That's it. I can only confirm. In Russian regulations, and it sounds strange and odd to me, usually they refer to average, module-based average, of course. It's tied to a module. Incidentally, I compared in instrumental, I, I missed this. What was the uh, average? What was the resolution? I mean, uh, GSD, three centimeters. What about this one? This is seven, seven centimeters. А погрешности. Вы сами затронули эту тему. Семисантиметровое разрешение с одной стороны и погрешность по контрольным пять раз выше. Обычно мы говорим о точности в один пиксель, даже субпиксель, а у вас ошибка пятикратная. Почему так? Почему так настолько разительная ошибка? Если все правильно делать с бипилотником, все равно это сохраняется. Я. Yeah. If you know that we started the project in 2014, and it wasn't a good start, and now uh, we we get the pixel accuracy. Во втором проекте да, там уже точности подтянули. Yeah, she confirms in the second project there is uh, pixel accuracy. I know that, yeah. That I know. <laughs> Any other questions? No further questions for the lady. Thank you, Natalia. Very good presentation.